When you think of an ass, what do you think of? This? This? Maybe that? If you did, then you're lying. Or maybe you just saw the thumbnail for the video. But yeah, we turned this into an ass with a little help. Now, why does this thing even exist? It is a super tiny, and trust me, I know what super tiny is, super tiny PC with an Intel N5105 and eight gigabytes of RAM. Who is asking for this? Like, I get the appeal for maker boards being small since they're used in robotics and to run Pi-hole, but this is just absurd. So Brett, why do you have it then? Well, TerraMaster sent me one of their DAS units. Yes, that's DAS, direct attached storage, which connects directly to your existing machine rather than being a full-fledged device that provides network attached storage. This was surprising because if you saw my last TerraMaster video, then well, I hate to say it, but I'm pretty disappointed in this device. I'm surprised they sent me anything at all. I think you can see where this is going, right? What? You can't? I'm, I'm gonna connect this to this. I, I thought that was obvious. Okay, why are we doing this? It seems silly, doesn't it? Yeah, but I have my reasons. Reason number one, a DAS is boring. It holds six drives and connects to your PC via USB. Then you have access to those drives. I mean, I tried that with my MacBook and it worked, so that's good, but we have bigger plans here at youtube.com slash at Raid Owl. Reason number two, I wanted an excuse to buy one of these super tiny baby PCs. But Brett, you just said they're dumb. Yeah, I like buying dumb stuff. I have a problem. Reason number three, I want to revisit Open Media Vault and see what it's all about these days. Oh my gosh, Brett, you're going to do raid over USB and Open Media Vault? They don't support that. It's a terrible idea. Okay, A, just because it's not supported doesn't mean it's not possible. And B, shut up. I think I got all of your comments out of the way, so no need to go down there and assert your nerdy dominance. I get it. In fact, you should go down there and comment about how this is actually the best idea ever. Really confuse the YouTube algorithm. All right, so let's go on an adventure and see how I turn this stuff into a functioning NAS. Whee! That dude's weird. So step one was to install the drives into the DAS. Pretty basic stuff. I'm using four six terabyte drives, and yes, I made sure they were SATA this time. And yeah, I'm only using four. This can take six, same outcome. And honestly, that's it for the DAS other than plugging in the power cord and the USB cable. Like I mentioned, we are going to go with Open Media Vault, so I installed that onto the mini PC. I actually tried Windows out on here since that's what came installed on just for fun, and it actually performed pretty well. I installed Open Media Vault onto the internal 120 gigabyte SSD, and it was nice seeing the four hard drives detected as well. After a few minutes and a single reboot, Open Media Vault was successfully installed and I was ready to get everything up and running. After logging in, yep, it looks pretty much how I remember it. A dated bootstrap template that was probably on sale for like 10 bucks. I then went in to confirm that my drives were detected and woohoo, they were, but when attempting to create a RAID array, it wouldn't allow any of the drives to be used. I wanted to give it the best shot for success, so I wiped all of the drives, but that didn't do anything. You see, Open Media Vault straight up won't allow you to use the GUI to create a RAID array on USB drives. This is because it's generally not a good idea, but neither is watching a RAID OWL video, but here you are. If you wanna bypass this, then just SSH in and create an MDADM RAID array in the CLI. It's honestly only a few commands you have to run, and. I'll link the guide I use down in the description below, and boom, you have an array. Once we go back into the GUI, you can see that when we go to create a file system, we now have a software RAID array to build it on. I went with ButterFS because I like me a cow system. Moo. And now we're good to go. As you can see from the dashboard, we have a working file system and even smart checks on our drives. Cool. Now to make this an actual network attached storage, we are going to need to create a share. I generally use SMB since I have computers from all walks of life in my home lab. The proper way to do this would be to create a user, then create a shared folder, then create the SMB share and give the user permissions. However, 
I, an intellectual, attempted to create an SMB share only to realize that I didn't have a shared folder. So I went to create one of those. Then I went back to create the SMB share only to cancel that to go create the user first. Then I'd attempt to connect and wonder why it wasn't working only to realize that I never actually created the SMB share. So I went to do that. Then after making sure the user had permissions, I was able to connect from my Windows machine. Feel free to do it the easy way or the Brett way. Either way will get you where you need to go. In terms of performance, well, it performs as you'd expect for a RAID 5 setup on hard drives. With the USB 3 connection, technically you don't have bandwidth concerns here, so the speeds I saw were about the same I'd expect from a direct SATA connection. Does that mean that I'd recommend this? No, I mean, surely there are long-term issues that would come up with a setup like this, but again, maybe not. Maybe I'll leave this thing running as an experiment. So at this point, it's a NAS. I could end the video, pat myself on the back, and go grab a high noon, but I'm not gonna do that. Well, probably grab high noon, those are delicious. I still wanna see how Open Media Vault fares as a Docker server. In my initial Open Media Vault video, it was quite easy to get Docker up and running with Portainer. Just install OMV Extras and click on the Portainer install. But apparently, that's changed and it's much less user friendly. You still have to install OMV Extras, but now you have to install the Docker Compose plugin, which will give you access to their own Docker orchestrator under services. I mean, the new UI is pretty much exactly like Portainer. If you took away all the good stuff, it's pretty bad. I tried using it for a bit and quickly got frustrated. There isn't a place to create volumes and even stranger, you can't just stop containers. Who decided that this was a better user experience? Probably somebody who doesn't even use it. I went ahead and just installed Portainer on it anyway, and it was a much better experience. And I'd recommend doing that if you're on a version of OMV with this new poo-poo way of handling Docker. Aside from that, my opinion on Open Media Vault hasn't really changed. If you want my full thoughts, go check out my video on that. But the TLDR is that I think it's good if you're looking to run a simple NAS on a wide range of hardware since Open Media Vault will actually work on ARM-based systems too. As for the hardware and how that runs, it's fine, man. Do you really need another video showing off the N5105? I mean, this chip is in everything. It's a four core, four thread CPU, boosts up to 2.9 gigahertz, runs at 10 watts and has internal graphics and Intel QuickSync, so it's pretty decent at transcoding. And there you go. As for the Terramaster DAS, well, it works. You put your drives in and you connect it to your PC and boom, your PC can see the drives. Total power usage for this setup was around 40 watts, so honestly, pretty solid. Probably leave it running for a while and set up some R-Sync process to use it as a backup. If it survives like six months, then we can revisit this and give it a gold star or something. So overall, what did we learn? What did we accomplish? Shit, man, I, I don't know. It was fun, at least. I learned that a Terramaster device is a lot better if it's not running any of their software. And I learned that this little PC, while it is adorable, is actually quite capable. And I can throw it pretty freaking far. We learned that Open Media Vault is still the NAS operating system you get at the bottom of your Cracker Jacks box. And most importantly, we learned that with friendship, anything is possible. All right, that is it. Link for all of this stuff, if you actually want it, is down in the description below. If you like this video for some reason, then drop a like. If you like content like this, then subscribe. If I actually see a bunch of subs from this video, then I'll know that you're all just a bunch of degenerates and I'll keep making dumb videos like this. I wanna give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and Patreons. You guys are my adorable little PC that I can just fit in the palm of my hand like a like a little baby bird. Kaka. You guys are cool beans and if you're still watching, you're cool beans too. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next one.